Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and we're going to do some gel printing and then turn it into some junk journal elements. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Hit that notification bell in order to be notified the next time that I have a video. Now today, this is what I call a live premiere. It's a recorded video, but you'll be able to chat with me and others while it is live. So definitely speak up in the chat and let us know that you're here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer those during the live premiere. I also go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, and that is a true live stream where I make a junk journal live, so you're welcome to ask questions and hang out with us and have a lot of fun. Hey, and if you're watching this video and it is after the live premiere and you want to get through it quicker, go just below, look for the little gear and you can change the speed to two times the speed or if you're on like a mobile device go up into the top look for the three dots and you can change the playback speed there I have a 12 by 12 gel plate here and a soft rubber brayer and one of the stencils from the November stencil club it's little snowflakes and I thought what I would do is gel print it with some gold paint so I've got a gold metallic what I call heavy body acrylic and it's metallic so it's a little bit heavier it's got a beautiful shimmer to it and this one's by Masters Touch so I'm going to put a little bit of this paint onto my palette make sure that when you open your paint that you do it away from your gel plate just in case there's some crusty bits so like there's a little crusty little bit right there so I'm just gonna pull that off and throw it away and then I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of paint kind of wipe it off and then we'll brayer this out And I'm putting a little bit of pressure so that the paint will go down into that stencil design and going back and forth to help spread that paint. I do have a little bit extra paint, so I'm just going to go past a little bit. And then I've got a little, this is a spool for thread, and I'll just make some texture so that when I clean up these edges, I have some interesting texture. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this stencil, and over here to the side, I have a little tub full of water and a little bit of Thieves Cleaner. And if I put that stencil in there pretty quick, then it will rinse right off and it won't have an accumulation of paint. All right, we're gonna give this a couple of minutes to dry. I want this to dry completely before I put on the next layer of paint. So let's, let's dry it and I'll be right back. This is dried, so if I touch it with my finger, the paint doesn't come off. I don't want it wet because when I go to put the next layer of paint on, if it's wet, it will smear. I've got some Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint, and this is Christmas green. I'm just choosing a green. I'm working on a kit that I'll start on Monday. And it is called a Christmas dream and it's traditional Christmas color. So I'm making these gel prints with the idea that elements that I want to make will all match. So I'm going to go ahead in here and brayer out this green paint. I may need just a little bit more. And what I'm doing is by layering this paint on top, I'm filling in where there was a void from the stencil and also from using that spool that held thread and reactivating the paint underneath. I may need a little bit more. I don't want to brayer over it too much because then it'll start lifting the paint. I'm just going to grab, uh, let's grab a book page. So I just ripped out some pages from a family Bible and I'm going to line that up on here. And let's see, I've got, I've got another book page, so let's just mop up these edges. I have some standard copy paper, so I'll just cut up here, and then my idea is just to lift this paint. There'll be some crusty bits left on there, and that's okay. We'll use those in other layers when we're making other gel prints. Still had a little bit of paint up here, so I'll just use my piece of paper to kind of pick up as much as that wet paint as possible. All right, so here is our gel print. Let's see how it turned out. 
So it has a little bit of some of those that didn't come out all the way, but some of them did. So it has that, I don't know, grungy vintage look to it. I think this will be great for a background. All right, I will set this aside. There's still a little bit of a pattern on here. And I think what I want to do is I want to capitalize on that and use that some more. So I'm going to grab a different stencil. This is my small polka dot stencil. I'll lay it down on top of what is the snowflakes from the November Stencil Club. And I'll come back with antique gold and let's brayer that in. I'll add some more texture and then let's lift this stencil. Let this dry for a moment and then we'll come back. The gold paint, I believe, is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and do green on it again. I've got another book page that I'm going to put in here and lift. I'm just laying out these pieces of paper again just to clean up around the edges. I like getting these little crusty bits on here, even on this little scrappy piece, because this will be fun to use on some projects. All right, let's see how this page turned out. I'm liking the grungy little effects that we're getting here. Isn't that kind of cool? Well, I'm going to sit here and gel print a few more. And then once I feel like I've got several pages ready to go, we're going to make a project. This is another one of the November stencil clubs. And I think this time I want to put some red in here. So I'll grab, this is true red. We're going to let this dry and I'll be back. The red has dried and I think it's about ready for me to lift. I've been contemplating here while I was letting it dry. What color do I want to use? We already had a few green pages. So we had this one with the snowflakes. And then this was the green polka dot. So I'm thinking maybe I will do ivory with this. So it'll be a contrast if we mix them with the other gel prints that I already have. So I've just got cream colored, ivory, off-white, something like that. And we're going to put this on here and brayer it out. If your brayer doesn't roll, more than likely you have too much paint and what it's doing is just pushing the paint around. Sometimes you may put a little bit too much down. Just keep brayering. You can lift your brayer and brayer it off onto a scrap of paper to the side. Got another book page. Just going to print this. And of course, mop up the edges with another sheet of paper. I think I'll even use the green one that I had earlier. Just picking up all those crusty bits. Since there's still a little bit of paint, I'll just flip this around and pick up some more of that paint. Little crusty bits. I think the ivory paint was a good choice. So now we have the red from what I call the poinsettias. These are small poinsettias. And then I just call these kind of a flower. I don't know, but with the crusty bits on there. So we get a little bit of that grunge look to it. You like it? All right. So what I'm going to do off camera is gel print some more. I think you've got the gist of how gel printing works. And then I'll come back. I'll clear off my desk and we will make something with these gel prints. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Again, you know, speak up in the chat. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask while I am here during the live premiere. And of course, if you have questions and you're seeing this video after the live pre premiere, do you use the comments down below? I see those and I try to respond to those. So if you have more questions, let me know. All right, I'm going to gel print some more and I'll be back. I cleared away the mess, so to speak, got my gel plate out of the way and I've decided I think what I want to do. So I'm just going to walk you all through the process. So this is where I was mopping up around the pages. I may or may not use this, but I thought I would leave it out. Then this is the snowflakes with the green. Here's the polka dots in the green. This is using, I believe this is the September Stencil Club. And I did it in red with ivory behind it. And it's got some of the crusty bits on there. This is the November Stencil Club, the half sheet that's got like the poinsettia flowers and then these uh, abstract flowers to the side. Then I've got a few book pages. I've got a 
songbook page and I've got a couple of pieces of cardstock. In fact, I even have some white cardstock and then I have some rubber stamps at the ready. I think what I want to do to start with is I want to make a journal page and then we're going to make a journal card and some ephemera, so to speak, to put inside. So I've got a foundation page here and I want to decorate this. It'll have a pocket on it so that we can put stuff in it and some writing space. So why not let's look at this i've got this piece of music that would be kind of interesting i've got this guy i've got more book pages so i think what i want to do is take one of these book pages and we're going to make a pocket i like to make my pockets just a little bit sturdier so they don't rip through i'm using a page out of a family bible i pick them up at thrift stores or when the metropolitan library has a book sale near me so check out your library system sometimes they have a book sale so i folded this in half and i think what i want to do is glue this together so i'm just going to come in here and glue this i'll use my bone folder let me slide this stuff out of the way and I'll scrape this across the page and push that glue all the way out to the edge and that'll really adhere these two together and there may be a little bit of glue on my table so I'll just kind of wipe it away all right so I have this little piece that I've started with so it's kind of sturdy and I want a pocket that possibly looks like an envelope let's do that so what I'm going to do first is trim this page because I don't need it the full width. I want it to basically fit within my journal. So I'm just turning this over. I want it to be about, about five and a quarter inches wide. And I don't really want this area up here where there's not any text. So I'm just going to cut that off. And I'll go ahead and cut this text off as well, just because I don't want that border. So knowing that my pocket will go in this direction on my page, so let's pretend this is my journal page, and this is gonna be a pocket that goes on here. So I'm just kind of looking at this to see, all right, how about if I fold this up, oh, about one, two and a half inches, maybe somewhere in there, and just crease this. And then I'll fold this down across here so now we've got this piece that's folded across and I did it backwards because I didn't want this to show so I'm just gonna refold it and I want to cut these corners off so it kind of looks like an envelope and I know you can't really see it right now because it's all one color but what I'll do is lay this in here and I'll mark there and there and then I'll take my scissors and cut across that corner and I'll flip this over to this side and cut this off so now I have the beginnings of an envelope I'll go ahead and use some distress oxa or distress ink walnut stain and go around these edges real fast while I contemplate how I want to decorate this envelope so what I'm thinking is I'm going to attach this to my journal page so that this has the pocket here and then there'll be a pocket behind it. But I want this to open all the way up and I want there to be some writing space inside here. So to create some writing space, well, let's look here. I happen to have a junior legal notepad. Let's see. If I take this, I could glue that to the inside of here. So I think what I want to do is decorate that really fast. How about if we use the uh, half sheet stencil? So I'm going to grab a scrap of paper. I'm going to lay that down on top of it. Let's see if I like this color. This is aged mahogany in distress oxide. It's a deep red. It's really dark, but I think I think it'll work. So I'm just gonna lightly 
go over the stencil. I want a faint pattern. It'll be a little bit darker on the edges. So I just made a paint pattern on there. So it's decorating that junior legal notepad. So now what I want to do is I want to glue this to the inside, but I want to put some distress inks on it first. All right, so I'm going to line this up. I think I do want a little bit of a border, so I'm going to slide this up just a smidge and turn it over and then I'll use my scissors and cut off this excess up here at the top. And then I'll reapply the distress ink off the area that I cut off. Okay, I like that. So now what I'm going to do is just glue this to the inside of my envelope. And then I'll refold it and fold that down. I'm going to cut a couple of strips. I'll use them here in just a moment. All right, so I'm looking at this and I want to put something on this area and this area so it's not so plain. So let's look at the pieces here. What if we use some of this green, maybe a strip of it across here? And maybe I will put, uh, I'll find something else, a border. Maybe we'll stamp on that. Okay, so let me measure this little flap. So that little flap is about... Oh, an inch and three quarters. So if we go an inch and a half, let's do that. So I'm going to make an inch and a half strip. I think that's what I want. So if I put this on here, and we have a little bit of a gap. So I'll go ahead and trim this off again. And then at this piece, I can just kind of put right here in the center. So when it closes, it'll be like that. So let's go ahead and put some distress inks on here. And I'll glue that in place. I like that. So maybe we can do some stamping down here. All right, so I've got the, I think this is French correspondence, something like that. And I want to stamp that on here so that it kind of obscures the text below. So I'm going to grab my ink pad. I've got jet black and I'm going to turn this where it's right side up and stamp because I want this to go this way. Okay. I have to think about which way I wanted it. Okay. So that added a little bit on there and why not just use some of the distress oxide. Let's go around the perimeter of this. You know, while we're at it, we could add a little bit of the poinsettias to the outside. Oh, I like that. Just kind of gives it a nice little vintage feel to it. All right, so we need a mechanism to close our little envelope. So let me grab, I think I'm going to grab a punch. I'll be right back. I was grabbing a punch, but I think I've changed my mind. I think I like the idea of stamping the word believe onto another piece of paper and then making that a little spot that the envelope would tuck into. So I'm gonna see if I can find, is this big enough? Hey, that's big enough. It's a craft piece of cardstock. So we're gonna stamp believe onto this craft piece of cardstock and then I'll trim it down to fit on the front and that will be my closure for my envelope like that. All right, so I'm just going to trim this. I'll go ahead and trim the edges too, as I don't want it as wide. I'm getting a pile of trash here to the side. All right, so that's going to go right here on the front of my envelope. So I'm going to put some distress inks around the edge. And I'm looking at this. Maybe I'll go ahead and round the corners with my crocodile. Kind of give it your own little label. You know, you can make your own little labels. So now I'm just going to use the distress oxide around, or the distressed walnut stain around the edge. I'm so used to saying distress oxide for some things that I get it confused. Okay, I like that. So what if we put this right here and then once see the flap is up, 
you can still see it and then we'll have this whole inside area all right so let's put some glue down so I'll put just a bead of glue right across the bottom here and I want to make sure that I place this in such a way that that glue is not touching my flap but it's capturing it and I'll untuck it and I'll set this aside to dry for a moment all right so I'm going to go back to my foundation paper and I know I will put this envelope as a pocket on one side of it so I need to decorate my page so that I can use this in my journal and I think what I want to do is take some of this sheet music or hymnal and maybe cut some pieces of it as well as cut some pieces of this one to fit on here so I like the pattern so what if let's cut about an inch and a half strip out of this one I'm gonna go ahead and cut two that way I have it for the other side of the page so we're gonna put this I may do it this way because I want to cover up these holes so if we put that there this is going to go on the other side pockets going to go right here on this side so I have room to put something in this area so how about if I were to cut a strip so probably right about there cut her up here I'm going to measure it I'm actually going to measure something y'all believe it or not okay so let's say if I do a four inch strip that goes below my envelope and I still have room to put something on the other side I'm going to trim off the edge of the paper so we're right at the music and then we'll do a four inch strip I'm gonna have a strip for the other side in case I want it so if we put this across our page and this up here we're kind of just doing a little collage okay so I'm kind of getting a little bits done I want a pocket on this side but I want a different pocket so how about you know we used the polka dot green earlier I think what I want to do is I'm going to cut a five inch square no not a square rectangle I'm going to grab another piece of book page because I want my pocket to be a little bit sturdier and I'll fold this in half and we're going to glue this together like I did for this envelope earlier and then let's take this green piece and I want to glue it down on top of the folded piece and that'll give it some more body okay I like that so I'm looking at this thinking okay if I put this on here I think what I want to do is kind of tear this across the edge here so let's just start down here so now I've got this piece that I can put across on this side let's get some of this clutter out of the way so if this is going to go there that's going to go down here I kind of like that and I've got this piece I can use this on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and trim it so it's ready actually I'm going to leave this piece on here so I can use it to help adhere this to my page so I'm leaving this little piece so that I can fold this over and when I go to glue it to my foundation paper I'll be able to go all the way to the edge with my journal card that I put inside I'm just trimming off the excess and I'll go ahead and tear this down at the bottom all right so I've got this for one side I've got this one over here let's put some distress inks on this piece and let's go ahead and put some distress inks on the strip I'm going to trim this to be 11 inches wide and then I'll put some distress inks on it this is going to go up there this is going to go in the middle I'm looking at the sheet music and I'm trying to decide do I like the way it looks right now or should I over stamp on top of it another pattern and I'm kind of thinking maybe I think I maybe stamp on top of it so let me see what kind of stamp I have I have this little clockwork stamp I think that might look interesting so grab me a scrap of paper here let's stamp on it let me stamp on the other side just in case I don't like it I just can't stand it no I think I like that just a pattern on there so I'm just gonna randomly 
stamp it, rotating it in different directions, just as a pattern. All right, so if I glue that down, glue that down, then we have this pocket, and then we have our pocket that we're going to put over here. So we've got a little space right here that didn't get anything put on it. So let's see what we can find that would look good there. I have this where I'm cleaned up the edge of my gel plate. So what if I took a little piece of this and put it right behind? So I'm just going to rip it. What if we put this behind here, put this on top of it, so it kind of covers it up a little bit, put this on top of that, that kind of fills it in, doesn't it, just a little bit? All right, so here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to glue down this piece at the top so it's in place, and then I want this piece in the corner here. So I'm just going to hold this there for just a moment and then let's apply some distress inks to this edge. And glue this down. So I want it right about there. Then we're going to glue this on top. And then these pieces are going to go here and here. I cut these strips earlier because I want to make sure I have the full use of my pocket. So we'll run a bead of glue down the side and put one of these strips down to where it's hanging off about a quarter of an inch or so. And we'll do it across the bottom as well. So if you ever are trying to make sure that your journal card will fit the whole pocket, put this little tab on here and that gives you the full width of your pocket or height of your pocket. If you're trying to put something in there that may be a little big. All right, so I'll just trim off this corner here and then trim up here. And then I'll let this dry for a minute so that it won't stick together. Now I want this to be a pocket, so I want to do the same thing. I want to put tabs on these three sides. So let's do that. So making sure I'm at the bottom, I'm going to go across here. And I'm just trimming off the excess paper here. Trim the corners. And again, I'm going to set these aside for just a moment so that they'll dry. And then we'll fold these under and then glue them down. So while we're waiting on that, let's flip this over. And I've got this other strip that we cut. So let's put that down across our page. I know I want to put this as a pocket on this side, so I'll go ahead and put a strip across the bottom here. Get this, I don't get glue everywhere. All right, so I'm going to let this dry a moment and then think about what I want to put over here. So I glued down this piece. I've added the strip across here. And I don't have anything planned for this portion yet, but I think what I want to do is I still have some of this junior legal notepad. I want to create some writing space. So if I put this in here on the page, that leaves this much area over here. I think I'm going to trim this off. So I'm just going to use my pencil which has now disappeared. There it is. And I'll mark this right about here and trim this off. So we'll put that right over here. But again, I think we need to put a pattern on it. And why not basically repeat what we did 
on the other side. So I think that's what I'll do is I'll grab this same stencil and a scrap of paper, line this up, and then let's use the Distress Oxide Age Mahogany again. I like that. And let's put some Distress Ink around the edges. Oh, and I think I want to stamp on here. I've got this little vine. I think it's called Leafy Border. I'm not positive. But I kind of like the way it has little flourishes on there. So that kind of gives it a, a nice little border. Let's put some Distress Inks on that. Just so I know where my center mark is, I'm going to fold this in half. And then that way, when I put this down, I'm kind of in the center here. And I think I want to do something on this edge. So let's do some Distress Oxide. And then if we put this on top, making sure I'm within my borders there. That kind of finishes that out, doesn't it? Let's glue this down. All right, so we're going to put... This little pocket, I'll fold the tabs in. It should be dry now. I'm gonna put that little pocket over here. This area is kind of plain back there. But I don't, I was gonna use the music, but I don't think I wanna use the music on this side. I think what I wanna do is let's, uh, let's stencil this other pattern. So this is the other pattern that's on the other half of the November stencil club. So I'm just gonna come in here and make a pattern on here. I'm just using the oval blending brush. I I like the way they work. I can get into the little crevices pretty easily. And then we put this down. So that gives us a nice background. Kind of go around the edge here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. I have a little piece of washi tape. I wanna cover up the holes on here. So I'm just going to glue this tear this, cut this to fit. All right, so since I am working with a painted paper, I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue behind that washi tape, because sometimes washi tape doesn't wanna stick. So that kind of gives us a little pattern across there. And let's get the other pocket pieces for the other side. And then we'll finish embellishing and we'll make some journal cards. All right, so I'll go ahead and fold this over. All right, so that's going to go down there. And just to kind of get the cohesiveness from the other side, I'll go ahead and put some washi tape. Wait, I'll go ahead and put some glue down. And then I'll put some washi tape on this side. All right, so that's across the bottom. Let's glue this into place. And then we've got our envelope that we're gonna to put together. So I'll fold this little tab. It'll tuck behind the word believe. And then these little tabs will fold to the back. And then we'll glue this down onto our page. Let me look at it first. I think I wanna put some Distress Oxide right here. Maybe just a little bit more. All right, are you liking how this is coming together? Basically using some stencils and rubber stamps and gel prints. I'm decorating this whole page out. So here's this side so far. And then we open it up. We've got this area. We've got a pocket here. And we've got this side. So now what I want to do is make a couple of journal cards. And I'm going to use some elements from a Christmas Dream subscription box. This will launch on Monday. What is Monday? The 20, 26th? I think that's right. I need to look at the calendar. I don't know what date that is. Hey, I was right. Monday the 26th is when I will launch a Christmas dream and that is a new subscription box that I'll have that will ship out November the 15th all right so how do I want to do this all right let's go ahead and get out this cardstock that I had earlier so I've got a piece of white cardstock here 
and I've got the cool Santa stamp so let's stamp this out oh I like him isn't he cute I like him all right so I stamped him and I happen to have this little scrap left over so let's stamp the word Santa Claus on this piece and then we're going to trim both of these so we can use them on a journal card. So I trimmed that piece and now I'm just going to trim out this guy. So I've got these two pieces that I want to use for a journal card and I've got this piece of red. So looking at this piece which is about three and a quarter inches so if I made a four by six journal card I could do that yeah and that look cute and this would go below it and it would fit maybe I'll even make it a little bit taller I like that so let's just do a four inch by let's do seven because then it will stick out of my pocket just a little bit see there so let's apply some distress inks so if we put him on there and then that right below it you know I don't think it needs a whole lot of embellishment I was going to paint it with tattered angels but I think I like that stark uh, bright white so we'll just glue this together then that will go in our pocket here We've got a nice little embellishment on that page. I have this little piece left over and I think I could get away with stamping. Let's look at the other words that I have here. How about Christmas? What if we were stamp Christmas on there and then I could glue that on top and it would be a secondary tuck spot. Yeah, I like that idea. Oh yeah, I'll come down just a tad. All right, so let's apply some Distress Ink. All these rubber stamps I have in my shop and I will be adding some more Christmas stamps really soon. I'm waiting on the images from Beeline Design so I can get them added. All right, I think I like that. So we're gonna put glue to make this a little pocket. I could put tabs on there like we did for the others so that we could have the full size of it, but I think this will work. And you know what? I think I'm going to fold this in half. Do, do, do. All right, where'd my bone folder go? It's a good thing I have more than one. <laughs> so that's going to go in there. All right, so I got, I got some smudges on here, but that's okay. We're going to deal with it. I've got a scrap here when I go with it. Bear with me now. Oh, there it is. I was looking for this little green. So what if we were to put that on front here? I think that'll be cute. So I'll trim this to fit maybe just a little bit smaller. So we'll put that on here. So let's put some distress inks. Oh, and then we'll stamp down that edge, maybe with that vine stamp again. So even if you get a smudge on there, just go with it. Don't worry about it. You know, when I was making greeting cards, it was the hardest to have clean hands all the time while you were working with different types of inks and mediums. You know what? I just started deciding that, you know, I'm just going to go with a grungy mixed media look because I'm tired of, of getting rid of a card because I got a smudge on it. All right, so let's use the vine again right up that side and then that'll fit right in there so we kind of had some little things here now I want to add some fussy cut elements so I went into and printed some of the items from the Christmas dream kit then I went ahead and applied some tulip dimensional glitter paint so can you see the glitter on there isn't that pretty that way it would have some little sparkle to it and i could add it to my page so let's look here i've got this little dragon butterfly but maybe something like that even though we kind of covered up 
I kind of like that look right there. So I'm going to apply this in the corner. So now we've got this little decoration right here. So let's flip this over and we need something over here. I've got this large journal card from the kit. Again, I've added the tulip dimensional glitter paint and I think that'll fit right there. So let's put something up here. I've got this little guy. No, maybe we can stamp Christmas again because we've got Believe and Christmas up there. I have Merry Christmas, but I think I like this one. So I'm going to do the Christmas again on another one of these cards. I like having these little artist trading cards here, pre-cut, ready to go. There'll be some in the subscription box, by the way. I like that. Okay, so let's put that up there. So I'll trim this out. I think I like that. So I'm going to put some distressings on here and we'll glue that on top. I have this little moth butterfly. What if we were to put it on the inside here so that you just kind of have a little decoration when you open it up? Oh, I didn't get it. I gotta let that dry. So we'll let that dry before I close it. Okay, so let's open the inside up. So I need something here and I've got this little poinsettia piece. I think that'd be kind of pretty to put across here in the corner or I've got this little holly leaf bit. Let's see what else we have here. I've got this journal card that could go over here. I think I like the holly leaf in the corner there. So I'm just going to glue that down kind of as a tuck spot in case we decide we want to put something on top. And I've got the word journal. Let's stamp that. There, I got a little scrap of paper here. Like that, and let's trim it out. Maybe I'll put it right in the middle or to the side. I think to the side. Let's add some distressings to this piece. Maybe this little poinsettia piece can go over here. What else do I have? I've got this little piece. Maybe that, that's kind of pretty, just a real simple design. It says holly berry, so I'm just going to put that down. And since we use the red over here, I like that pop of red, so I'm going to take what's left of this red here and let's cut another journal card. So I have a seven by eight and a half. So let's make this a five by seven journal card because it should fit right in my pocket. And then I have this little strip I can use somewhere else. So if I put that, make sure that I put my pocket together correctly, that would go in there. So let's put something on this piece. I'm going to add some distress oxide. Put my elements back in my pocket here. I could put something like that on there. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I have to think about it sometimes. You know, when you guys are at my live streams on Monday, generally what I do is I plan the page in ahead basically by making one. So I have one already made. I know what I'm going to put on there so that when I go to do the video with y'all, you're not waiting on me to make a decision. I've already made the decision. I'm just executing it. All right. So if I put this guy, it has some little flourishes. We didn't use the sheet music over here, so what if I were to take a piece of that sheet music and put that right behind at the top? So let me trim this down. So first, I want to trim off the excess here. Let's 
And I think I want to go four and three quarters since this is a five inch journal card. I want it to be just a little bit of a border. And then I don't need the whole width uh, or height. So I'm just going to come in here and say, okay, this is about two and three quarters. So if I go three inches, maybe let's see how that looks. Nice, a nice little border. So we'll do a three inch strip. Save all those scraps. You never know. All right. So that would go in there. What do you think? Let's put some distress inks on the music and then we'll glue it down. Well, I think I'm about done with this junk journal page using some gel prints and stencils and stamps and different book pages. I hope that you're inspired to create, that you've enjoyed this session. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And then definitely come back on Monday where I show the rest of the journal that this journal page is going into and hopefully inspire you with some other techniques and ideas for making a junk journal. Do check out the description box below for links to the products that I use. You won't be able to get to the subscription box yet, but you will on Monday the 26th. But the rest of the items, you'll be able to get to those. You like that? So that's going to go right in here. And we still have a little tuck spot we could put something there. You know, I could... I'm going to cut this down and I'll put it over here as a little card. So, let's see, it is seven, so three and a half. We put that in there. So let's just round the corners and make it kind of interesting. And let's apply some Distress Ink. Have this little leaf. There's a quartet that has little stamps like this in it. So that kind of just adds a little flourish by stamping it. And then that goes right there. You like it? I like it. I think it turned out really good. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you're inspired to get out your gel prints and play just a little bit. Get your stencils out. Make some patterns. Have some fun. Use your rubber stamps. All of the above to create a junk journal page that has some creative pocket and envelope here and a way to use those gel prints. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for watching. I greatly appreciate you supporting me. If you have any questions, use that, uh, the comments field down below or go over to my website, lindaisrael.com. Use my contact me form there. All right, everybody. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.